All right, today we're going to crack a mystery that's been tripping up users of Proxmox. You know, that awesome open source hypervisor we all love? It's a classic case of, wait a second, where did that feature go? So, let's dive right in. So, picture this. You've just upgraded to the latest and greatest version of Proxmox. The interface is looking sharp, everything's running smoothly, but then you go to set up your uninterruptible power supply and... Nothing! You're left wondering, where on earth is the setting for this? And hey, if you're scratching your head about this, trust me, you are not alone. This is a super common point of confusion for pretty much everyone, from new users to Proxmox veterans, and it pops up in the forums every single time there's a new release. Okay, so let's kick off our investigation here and really define the missing feature that's at the heart of this whole mystery. And look, the expectation here is totally reasonable, right? I mean, we're talking about Proxmox, this incredibly powerful hypervisor where you can manage literally everything from crazy complex storage to live VMs, all from a nice web GUI. You'd naturally think that configuring a critical piece of hardware like a UPS would be just as easy. And all this confusion, it leads to the next big question, the one that really gets the online debates going. Was this feature ever actually there to begin with? And this, right here, perfectly captures what feels like a tech Mandela effect. You've got one group of people who absolutely swear they remember a nice, simple graphical interface for their UPS in an older version. And then on the other side, you've got the seasoned pros who are just like, nope, never happened. So who's right? So here's the truth bomb. The veterans, they're correct. Proxmox has never, ever had a built-in native GUI for managing a UPS. What people are probably remembering are custom setups they've made, maybe some third-party tools, or even getting it confused with the interface from other software like TrueNAS. All right, so if it's not in the GUI, how on earth are you supposed to do it? Well, that brings us to the tool that you absolutely 100% need to know about. The answer, my friends, is NUT, which stands for Network UPS Tools. This is basically the standard for managing a UPS on Linux. It's incredibly powerful, it's super reliable, and it works with pretty much any UPS you can imagine. But, and this is the big but, it's all done from the command line. And this really highlights the big disconnect for so many people. You look at something like TrueNAS, and setting up your UPS is just a few clicks in the GUI. Easy. But with Proxmox, you've got to break out the terminal. For a lot of folks, that feels like a huge step backward and really gets to the heart of that old Linux debate, do you go for user-friendly convenience or raw command line power? You know, this quote from the community just hits the nail on the head. It's a totally fair question, isn't it? We live in an age of home labs and small business servers that do critical work. Running one of those without a battery backup is just asking for trouble. It's not a luxury anymore. It's a basic requirement. Okay, this brings us to a really critical point. This isn't just about making things easy or convenient. This is about the fundamental safety and integrity of your hardware, and more importantly, your data. Let's dig into why this matters so, so much. Look, we all think of massive data centers with these huge redundant power systems, right? But a massive chunk of the Proxmox user base is made up of home lab enthusiasts, small businesses, and people running remote edge servers. For them, a simple power flicker can be an absolute disaster if there isn't a way to shut down gracefully. And check this out. This quote is just a perfect high stakes example from the real world. This user depends on NUT to automatically and safely shut everything down if their backup generator fails to start. This isn't just about surviving a quick power outage, it's about having an intelligent, automated system to prevent catastrophic data corruption. Okay, so if this is so obviously important and the community is practically begging for it, why isn't it in the Proxmox GUI yet? Let's get into the great GUI debate. Well, the most likely answer really just comes down to one thing, priorities. You have to hand it to the Proxbox team. They have done an amazing job integrating these huge, complex, enterprise-level features like Ceph storage and live VM migration. It's very likely that a UPS interface, while crucial for many, was probably seen as more of a niche feature compared to that other heavy lifting. But that desire? Oh, it is not going away. This user just sums up the feeling perfectly. It's not a nice-to-have anymore. People are now actively dreaming about this magical interface finally making an appearance in PVE, the Proxmox virtual environment. So, until that magical day comes, what can you actually do about it? Let's get practical and look at the real-world workarounds that the community is using right now. Okay, here are the four main ways people are handling this right now. First, and by far the most common, is just biting the bullet and setting up NUT manually in the terminal. 
Second, if you happen to have APC hardware, some people find the APC PSD tool a little easier to work with. Third, this one's a bit more advanced. You can use another device like your NAS or even a router as a central UPS server that tells your Proxmox host what to do. And finally, if you're comfortable with code, you can write your own custom scripts to handle the shutdown process. So, what's next? What does the future hold? Honestly, maybe nothing changes. But as Proxmox gets more and more popular, especially with users outside of those big corporate data centers, the demand for user-friendly essentials like this is only going to get louder. If the community keeps making noise, you have to think the developers will eventually take the hint. But yeah, until then, the solution is pretty much the same. As one person in the forums perfectly put it, you're just going to have to nut up and get friendly with that command line. And all of this really leaves us with one big final question to chew on. In a world that is moving more and more towards simple, user-friendly graphical interfaces, at what point does something that was once considered an edge case for experts become an absolutely essential feature for everybody?